big Woo! shout in this place. Get Thank up you. on them feats and have a good time today. Come on, Chief, open us up Man, tonight. I tell you, I, I, was, I, I left the house a little while ago. Been a busy day, but I was looking over there at my sweetheart and remembering what, what Saturday's going to be, Valentine's Day. And, you know, for my wife, we have Valentine's Week <laughs> just to make sure I get it. I and the to... lady said, yeah. all right. Well, that gives me seven days to get one right. It isn't seven continual days of Valentine's. She just gives me a week to get one day in and get it right. Guys, he ain't right, is he? <laughs> hey, uh, girls, would y'all take that over nothing? Absolutely. Give me a boom boom back there. Come on, girl. All right. We having enough fun today. But anyway, I say that for the simple reason that I, I hope all of you guys get to uh, come tomorrow and have a great time at the church and, and spend some time with the one you love. And you know what? As I challenged you back around Christmas time, if you're out with your mom, or your grandmother, make that call on Valentine's Day and tell them that you love them because it's going to mean the world to them. There's a lot of people that are hard-headed out there, not like you and me, you know, but some people that are really hard-headed that won't make that phone call. They're waiting on the call. By golly, make it. Make that phone call and, and tell it to someone who needs to hear it. Father God, we just yes. thank you, Lord. We thank you for these opportunities that you give us every day to serve you, Lord. We're so proud to be a part of Miracle Place Ministries and the wonderful opportunities that we give to the community through the church, Lord, and the key word there is give. We give these services without any expectation except for pleasing you, Father. Yes, so we would ask that you continue to stand us up, Lord. Give us wisdom and support us and make it possible. And Father, we'll always remember to give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the yes, praise Lord. in your precious Son, Jesus' name. And all his people said, Amen. Come on, give the Lord a great big shout in this place. Are you ready? Here we go. Clap your hands if you're free tonight. I want to clap a little louder than before. I want to sing a little louder than before. I want to jump a little higher than before. Well, I got to shout louder than before. What? Sing that again.
can't contain, I can't control. I want more of you, God. Well, I want more of
Let's get some prayer leaders up here right now, and uh, we'll pray for you tonight. So any special prayer requests that you have, if you'll just get out of your seat, let somebody pray for you. They'll pray for you. right now that there are some people that are concerned about their life. They're just really struggling right now. The Word of God says that the, the steps of a righteous person are ordered by the Lord. If we really believe that, then we can trust that God is ordering our steps. And if we can trust that God is ordering our steps, then we can trust that God is faithful to see us through, amen? That he would never give us anything more than we can handle in this life. Oh, but Jeannie, I messed up and I kind of screwed things up a little bit, so now I'm a little concerned about where I'm going. Can you believe that God is even big enough to overcome our, our missteps and our, our issues and, and all this thing and get us back on the path? Can you believe that with me? That God is big enough and greater than, than any of our mess-ups or any of our bad decisions or anything of that nature. Can we agree with that? God is a good God. You're saying, but Jeannie, I'm scared. I'm afraid that this is happening or I'm afraid that that's happening or this may happen. But Job said, the thing that I have feared the most has come upon me. But guess what? Even though Job was afraid of it and wasted a lot of energy being freaked out about the thing that he feared the most that might come upon him, it still came. So there was a lot of wasted energy walking in fear. Would you agree with that? We can't walk around life freaked out that something is gonna happen to us or something's gonna go down. Because the fact of the matter is that we live in a sin sick, broken world and things are gonna happen. People have free will, they're gonna intrude their free will on you sometimes. Sometimes with your free will, you're gonna do something that might bring something on you. Stuff happens in life. 
Can we agree about that? I want to encourage you that even though the thing that Job feared the most came upon him, he lived to tell the story. So there's going to be things that we walk through in our life that are scary, that we don't want to walk through. There are going to be things in our life that happen with us that we wouldn't choose for ourselves. But one thing is, we don't need to walk around in fear. Because Jesus said that he would never leave us nor forsake us. So he is faithful. Whatever we walk through in life, he will see us through. Amen. Father, I pray for your people right now. I ask you to do an amazing work in our hearts. I pray, Father God, that you would relieve us from a spirit of fear in the name of Jesus. Father, liberate us from the opinions of men. Lord, thank you for your patience that you are continuing to develop within us, Lord God, a fortitude and a perseverance, Lord God, that nothing that we confront in this world is gonna be able to hold us back. We're gonna run over a troop and leave over a wall because our God is mighty. Because it's not by our hand, it is by His hand. It's by His hand that we even stand today, that we live, move, and have our being. Father, help us to take our focus off of ourselves. It is not about us. It is not about us and our perfection and our glory and how great we are and all this groovy stuff. It is about you, my Lord. It is about you and the purpose and plan for which you have created us for. Help us, Lord, to live each day as if it were our last, Lord God. Help us to live each day walking in the power of your presence, Lord God, pursuing the call that is on our lives. Lord, we're like vapors. Lord, we're here today and gone tomorrow. Help us to utilize the time that we have, Jesus. Deliver us from our desire for this broken system they call the world. Light a flame in us, Father. Give us a passion for the things that you were hungry for. The things that are eternal, the things that are going to last, the things that mean something. given us a spirit of fear. The sheep know their shepherd's voice. Help us to know your voice distinctly and to buzz out of anything that is not of you. We will no longer submit or surrender to the voice of the enemy or the voice of this world or the voice of self-doubt that's in our cloud and our minds. We just surrender to you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, we welcome you to lead and guide us through each and every day. Forgive us and keep patience towards us as we journey this. Lord, we give you all the glory and honor and praise because you're worthy. It's not about us, it's about you. 
it's all about you. It doesn't matter what people think about us. It doesn't matter what they say. We stand before you and you alone, Lord. Haters empower us, Lord God. They cause us to burn in our spirit to, to pursue you even more, to perfect ourselves even more, to strive even more. ready to pull out move on y'all can be seated I came up in here all bound up with a bunch of energy and stuff now I'm like all laid back <laughs> Mellow. how's everybody doing come on man you get a little bit better than that right <laughs> Yeah, that's what I like to hear. Awesome, 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 awesome. Love you guys. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Do we have any visitors in the house? If we do, if you just raise your hand and keep it up for me. I'm scanning. I'm looking. I see we're pointing. Oh, there we go. There you go. I found you. How are you doing? Where are you guys from? You pause. That means you had to think about it for a minute. You don't want us to come see you, do you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome, man. So are you guys moving to St. Francisville? Are you? All right. So you'll be a little bit closer, man. We sure hope and pray that if you're looking for a church home, that you'll consider making Miracle Place your, your home. Amen? We welcome you guys to come back uh, Sunday. We have a married couple's Valentine banquet tomorrow night. I don't know if you guys are married or not, but if you are, we'd love to have you. We'd love to. You can come free. Amen? I'll give you a free piece of meat and a piece of shrimp. All right? And I'll even throw in some salad if you behave. Because I can tell you're a salad eater. <laughs> well, thank you so much. They gave you a little card. In a few minutes, we'll take up our tithes and offerings, and you can throw that in the bucket. Um, there's a place on there for an email address if you guys have that. We sent out a daily devotion. Give you a little bump of Jesus first thing in the morning to start your day. As well as there's a place on the back for prayer requests. We have people, intercessors that are up here throughout the week that pray over the prayer requests. So we take that serious. Amen? Amen. Are we prayer people? Yes. Yes, indeed. So let's thank God for our visitors tonight. Thank you all so much for coming. We're excited. All right. Well, we're going to go to uh, commercial break right now, see what's happening around the house, and then I'll be right back. The meeting's going to be held at Sister Jeannie's house because she's local, but I will be facilitating the group. It's been a positive experience. Um, 
we have developed a lot of friendships and become one as a family in Christ. The format of our group is uh, a video series and we have books and there's going to be sharing and praying for each other as well. No one should feel intimidated um, because we are all one in Christ and each of us bring our own attributes to the family of God. If you're interested in becoming a leader for a small group, uh, there's an application that you can fill out. It's located by the entrance doors. Complete that, get it back to Pastor Anthony by February 22nd. Stay connected by visiting MiraclePlaceChurch.org. At this time, we ask that you silence all cell phones, bring your kids to the age-appropriate locations, and prepare your hearts for Bishop's message. All right. <laughs> Yay. Um, somebody was fired up about the homeless meeting, right? <laughs> we got to go get them, right? Hey? <laughs> All right. We're really excited about that. That's one of our newest ministries here. And uh, Christina kind of opened that door, and, and uh, it's real exciting. Man, we had like 35 volunteers last time, I believe. So we're looking for that many. They had a wonderful turnout. Uh, it's just a real great thing to go out and, and touch people where they're at. Amen. Some of those folks, they're never going to come in the house. You know what I'm saying? you got to go out to the highways and byways and compel them to come in. Amen. All yep. right. So, Christina, tell us a little bit about uh, what's going on out there. Well, this Sunday we're going. What we do is we just get a group of us together, and um, we take scarves and jackets, toothbrushes, any kind of hygiene stuff. And we also, um, if you have any, like, money donations that you want to give, we can go and purchase some things for really cheap. And we take them out, and we just reach out to the homeless. We're going to take food this time as well. And it's just, it's a great time, and it's very rewarding just to see the smiles that you could put on, you know, people's faces who don't have and who are less fortunate. So I would encourage everybody, if you can, to come out and join us. It's, um, we're going to meet at 1 o'clock in the parking lot here on Sunday. So I hope everybody comes. <laughs> Yay! All right. So right after service on Sunday, they'll they'll be right out in the parking lot. Just look for the group that look like a bunch of thugs. I'm teasing. It was just a joke. She doesn't even look like that. Okay. My goodness. Anyway, it's so exciting just to be able to bring the love of God to other people. Amen. And I know some people have preconceived notions about people that are on the streets and stuff, but a lot of people are there because of their own lifestyle and choices. Some people are there just because of, of, of economic situations and they found themselves in a horrible place. You don't ever want to pass judgment on people because you will find yourself walking through something similar. Ask me how I know. You know, so keep keep your opinions between you and Jesus, and and uh, just we're not called to judge people; we're called to to walk life out with them. Amen. Jesus said, "I didn't come to judge; I came to seek and to save that which is lost." It is not the well who need a physician; it is the sick. Amen. That should be our attitude. All right. Hallelujah. All right. Well, Father, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus, and we ask you, Lord God, to bless and anoint that outreach this weekend. 
Father, we're asking that you would uh, touch your people who are sowing into your kingdom tonight. Lord God, for every gift, every tithe, every offering that is brought before you, I pray, Father God, that you would bless it, Lord God. Bless it back unto the giver, Lord. Strengthen and encourage them and provide in their greatest area of need, Lord. We're just loving you and blessing you and thanking you for the opportunity to co-labor with you. In the name of Jesus, we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Amen. Come on from all over this place and sow into the kingdom of God. Hey guys, so glad that y'all are with us tonight. We love you so very much. Father, I just lift up all of our people that are online with us tonight. As for your grace and your favor to be manifested in their life, Father. Meet every need that they have right now in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Hey, we love you. Don't go away. Got a great service for you. Get ready. Something great's about to happen. Come on, give the Lord a great big shout in this place. Good evening, good evening. Are y'all ready to jump into the Word of God tonight? Um, John chapter 14. Um, and um, Pastor Chris, I um, you know, I want to do some worship probably tonight a little bit. So maybe some IHOP worship if you could. So just, um, would you just stay ready? Let's just, let's just stay ready. Um, John chapter 14 tonight, if you got your Bibles, go ahead and uh, turn there. And this is uh, Jesus speaking. And so what does the Bible say tonight? It says, let not, your, let not your heart be troubled. And, and listen, guys, uh, heart disease has run into my family. And so I've used this scripture literally to speak about my blood pumping heart as well as my spiritual heart, my spirit. And, and so this scripture, I, I lay hands on my own heart and I say, Lord, according to your word, John 14, 1, you said, let not my heart be troubled. So Lord, right now I receive in my blood pumping heart the health of God, the strength of God, a heart disease will not come into my heart. I will never have a heart attack in the name of Jesus. Let not my heart be troubled. And then, of course, the Bible teaches us even in this passage, he says that in the world you will have tribulation, trials, adversities, perplexities. In other words, life is hard, right? You know, that's why I always uh, come with grace and, and love and mercy towards precious people, even when they're walking through something, rather than being critical or judgmental towards them. Because I understand that life is a hard battle. Are y'all out there? And they're already under it. You know, it's almost like the, the man is on the ground already. And should we kick him while he's down? But in many ways, it seems that that's what happens with a lot of people. So I hope that we'll be a people of God that will really have God's heart and God's love and compassion and we'll understand that people are fighting what we call a hard battle called life. And we don't want to kick them. We don't want to bring them down. If we do anything, we want to edify them. We want to help them. We want to build them up for the glory of God. Are y'all out there? 
So here's what the scripture says. Let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, Jesus is saying, if you believe in the Father, believe also in me. And in this passage, what he's going to teach us is, is that if you've seen me, Jesus, you have already seen the Father. He says, uh, Thomas, he says, um, uh, down Thomas, he says, um, you say, show me the Father and it'll suffice us, but... Thomas says, have I been with you so long and you say, show me the Father? Thomas, I am God. When you see Jesus, you see God. How many of you felt it? It's good when you preach it and you feel it. And that's why Jesus said, if you believe in God... Believe also in me, and then he'll try to make a case for himself. You don't believe just for the sake of believing, because I'm telling you, believe for the work's sake that I do. Only God can do the works that I've been doing. Are, you, are y'all alive? Yeah. And then he said this. All right, there's four P's in this chapter. I've been meditating on this chapter here. Jesus said, in my Father's house are many what? Mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you, because I'm not going to lie to you. But I go to prepare a place. Look at your neighbor and say, Jesus is preparing a place for you and for me. So here's what Jesus is saying. He says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. I'm going to give you power. Are you all out there? I'm going to establish a path, and I'm going to give you peace. The four P's. Place, power, path, and peace. Are y'all out? I mean, you know, Jesus is the prince of peace. Come on now. I said Jesus is God. That's why he said if you believe in God, girl, you got to believe in me, cause I am God. So you got to. I say you got to believe. I got to believe, boy. You got to believe. You got to. You got to believe. All right, y'all got it. Give God glory. All right, praise God. Now you're fired up. <laughs> so he says this. He says, and if I go and prepare a place for you. By the way, he said. Um, Not only would he prepare you a place, but he called it something. The the scripture just said it. A what? What is a mansion? A big old house in heaven? Wait a minute. What does heaven look like now that you bring it up? Streets of gold? So God, like, just paves his highways with gold? Could you imagine killing somebody for pavement? (laughs) Just thinking, uh, just saying. (laughs) How ridiculous is that? Man, I was hammering on our parking lot the other day with the tractor, just testing it out. Who saw me out there? Was that serious business? Y'all ever seen any operator on a a piece of equipment do that? Was that crazy? They saw me on that tractor. And I had the box blade on there, and I was backing into that that asphalt out there that's so beat up. I'm ready. I'm ready to redo that parking lot, man. It's like, it's time. How many of you believe it's time to get the parking lot fixed? (laughs) All right. I tell you, if you don't say amen, I bet your front end of your car will say amen. <laughs> I bet your car will start preaching. <laughs> that car says, I'm tired of the pig pen anointing. <laughs> and so I was back, and look, I take that box blade and drop it down on the, on the three-point hitch on the tractor. And I'm an old country boy, so... And I'd back into that asphalt, and it would smash that asphalt. It'd pick it up off the concrete so that we can jackhammer the bad pieces out and pour new concrete out there. But I was just testing it to see what was happening. And then I loaded all the asphalt on the trailer, 
and then it was stacked up on the, the trailer, and then I took the four-wheel drive without any ramps or anything and jumped up on the trailer on top of that on the, and put the tractor on top of the rocks. Those guys like to flip. They said, hey. I said, man, we ain't never seen nobody drive a tractor like that. You better give God glory when you got the anointing. You <laughs> Are y'all... All right. I mean, you know that the anointing will come on you with rock therapy, baby. <laughs> that what Teresa says, tractor hydraulic uh, anointing. All right, whatever that is. All right, so my, my point is this, is, is that everything that we have in the physical realm came from the spiritual realm. So what we understand then is the physical realm is a type of the spiritual realm. So just like you have a place to dwell in, a house to live in here, um, so also in heaven you'll have a mansion. Are you out there? And Jesus is building your house. Jesus is a carpenter. Come on now. He was raised under his stepfather Joseph and Joseph was a carpenter. And I'm telling you right now, he's even building the new Jerusalem one day that will come out of heaven and abide right there in Jerusalem. His headquarters will be right there in Jerusalem. Us faithful saints will be kings and priests. Are y'all out there? Listen, king represents the government. Priest represents religion or ministry for the glory of God. He says you'll be over the government and over all the religious services for Jesus. Man, kings and priests. So he says that I'm going to prepare a place for you. And then he says, I'm going to come when? I'm going to come again. And then I'm going to receive you unto myself. How many, it would be all right if Jesus just took you, uh, brought you right next to him, receive you unto himself. That where I am, there you may be. Also, listen, let me tell you something. In this world, our understanding is, is, is clouded. And the Bible says we look through a glass darkly. Meaning that when we say that we're going to be with Jesus, because of the world and, and the limitness of us being able to see, we don't really understand fully what it means to be in the presence of God. I mean, in his Shekinah, we're actually in his, how can I say it? Because there's like different levels of presence of God. But this level of presence is like God is right next to you. Your light can see him in his full image, you can, you can feel him, you can see him, you can identify with him. And so when you get into that kind of presence, let me tell you what it'll do, because I've seen him. I saw, I saw Jesus one time. Jesus is so glorious that my body could not take looking at him but for I could look up, and I couldn't take it no more, and I'd have to look down. And I weeped and I wailed because he was so glorious and great that that's, he is all I wanted. And I, I wanted him so much that I couldn't take it. Everything in me wanted Christ. Everything in me wanted him more than anything in the universe. Nothing else mattered. All that mattered was him. That's how glorious Christ is. That's how glorious God is. And so when he says that there, will, there where I am, you will be also. I'm going to create you a mansion. I'm going to give you a place. Are y'all out there? 
I'm going to come again and receive you unto myself. Look, looking through a glass darkly, we can't understand what that means. But when you get into the presence of God Almighty, when you see God for who he really is, I don't have any words. There's no word to describe how great God is. Because everything I say is great and glorious and majestic and all of that. You think physical. But when you see God, it'll be like nothing you've ever seen in your life. Believe me. So you don't have anything to measure. You have nothing to gauge what God is like because there's nothing in this world that could come even near comparing the glory of God with the glory of anything in this world. So therefore, for us to think about something uh, glorious, we're, we're limited. But with God, there's no limit. All right, come on, let's, let's, let's move. Give the Lord a great big shout. Woo! All right, you're saved. You're on the right team. We're heading in the right direction, man. We're living for God. We're going to see God. And he says, and where I go, uh, go, you know not. You don't know the way. And uh, Dalton Thomas says, Lord, what's your address? I'm going to put it in my GPS so that I can find you. Are y'all out there? And we don't know where you go. And how in the world, Jesus, do you tell us? Uh, uh, um, uh, and, and how could we actually know where you live or know the way uh, uh, to your house? We don't, we don't know your address. Can I ask you a question? What is the address? What's Jesus' address? Wait a minute. What is it? Everywhere. Everywhere. Okay. I'm pretty. Uh, survey said. So Jesus' address is everywhere. So uh, can y'all see the numbers on his mailbox and it's in front of his driveway? Oh, you can't. Oh, he's past numbers, huh? See, when you reach the level of Jesus, you don't need no numbers, baby. Because <laughs> the next scripture, John 14, 6... Jesus comes and tells Dalton Thomas, because immediately, listen, how many of you know that God always allows a doubter around you? I remember some of the words that Jesus would say when he was walking planet earth with his disciples. He told how, how, how much longer must I suffer you? When will you get it? Have I been walking with you all of this time? And you say, show us the Father? Have you not gotten anything yet that I've been teaching you? And now you say, I'm saying, listen, um, yeah, you'll know the way. Uh, when I'm going to die and you're going to know the way. And you say, how can we know the way? We don't know where you're going. We don't know what your address is to your house. And Jesus says, Thomas, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man comes unto the Father except through me. Thomas, the address to my house is me. You can accept me anywhere you are in planet earth. You can accept me. But if you accept me as Lord and Savior of your life, I will prepare a place for you. I'll put you on the right path. I'll give you power. And I'll give you peace that the world can't give you. Are y'all out there? The world didn't give it to me. And the world can't take it away. If you had known me, you should have known my father also. 
for, for from henceforth you know him, and you have seen him. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it will suffice us. <laughs> and Jesus said unto him, Have I been with you so long, all this time, and yet um, you don't... Uh, and yet, has thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And then how do you say, uh, then show us the Father? Are y'all out there? How many of you know that when you see Jesus, come on now, you've seen the Father? And then Jesus goes on to say, Believeth thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? And the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but it's the Father that dwells in me. And it's actually Him that's doing the works through me. How many of you know God's living through you? Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father's in me, or else even believe me for the very work's sakes that I do. Verily, verily, I say unto you that he that believes on me, how many of you believe on Jesus? The works that I do shall he do also, and even greater works than these shall he do, because I go to the Father. And, whoso, and whatsoever you shall ask in my, my name, that will I do that who will be glorified. That the Father will be glorified in the Son. So let's just stop and think about that. So what name do I pray in? Why do I pray in the name of Jesus? Wait, wait, go ahead. We have to go through him to be able to speak to God. Oh, so Jesus is at the right hand of God the Father. Yes. And he's interceding for us. So Jesus is like a mediator, right? Let's even take it a step further. Jesus said later on in this chapter, and uh, what, what time is it? Um, Pastor Chris, another three or four or five minutes. Get up and let's do some worship in here. Um, but Jesus said that it is expedient that I go away, right? In other words, I got to go. Because if I don't go, I will not send the comforter, in the Greek is paraclete, or, or the Holy Ghost. And when he comes, he will teach you all things whatsoever I have said unto you. He shall bring all things back to remembrance, and he shall show you things to come. So the Holy Ghost, just like I'm with y'all, Jesus, now I'm walking with my disciples in planet Earth. I'm with you on a daily basis. I'm helping you navigate your life. I'm leading and guiding you. I won't leave you comfortless. I'm not going to leave you like an orphan. I'm not going to leave you to yourself. I'm going to send the third person of the Godhead, uh, Godhead, the Holy Ghost, and he'll have a present day ministry. He'll be omnipresent everywhere at one time, and he will live in you. And when he lives in you, he will identify with me and my word because I'm the word of God. And he'll show you things to come. He'll be a comforter. He'll be a helper. He'll be a strengthener. He'll be a standby. He'll be an advocate. He'll be an intercessor. He'll be in you. God will be in you. Woo! Woo! So now this is what happens. How do you feel the Holy Ghost right now? How many of you want to try to do it without him? That's why we have to invite Holy Spirit to help us. Holy Spirit, right now I invite you into this service. I invite you into my heart. I invite you to preach. I invite you to speak to my heart. Show me things to come. Bring all things back to remembrance whatsoever Jesus has taught us. 
I'm asking you, Holy Spirit, that you will do what Jesus sent you to do. Now watch this. When I invite Holy Spirit, I allow Holy Spirit to intercede for me. He's an intercessor. And I allow Him to lead me, feed me, protect me, provide for me. I allow Him to even pray through me. And what happens is, is when the Holy Spirit intercedes and prays for me, He relays it to Jesus Christ who's at the right hand of God the Father. And then Jesus relays it to the Father. And when it reaches the Father, the Father says, Yes, send the answer down now. And then... So that's why Jesus says Chapter 14 I'm creating a place for you I'm putting you on God's path for your life. I've directed you. I'm giving you power. Holy Ghost power. What is it? It's comfort. It's strength. It's Him speaking wisdom into us, leading us, guiding us, showing us things to come. Look, God knows all things, man. You submit yourself and surrender yourself to the Holy Spirit and let Him help you. Let Him comfort you. Let Him strengthen you. The Holy Ghost will direct you and lead you in God. He'll lead you on the right path, the path of God. I am the way, the truth, and the life, said Jesus. He'll put you on that path. And then what he'll do is, is he'll give you peace. Say it with me. Say a place, a path, power, and peace. Just wait. Just close your eyes and let the Lord touch you tonight.
many of you? Can y'all hear me now? How many of you want to turn this place into a worship place? I believe God can get more done in a fence than that's five times faster than the instant than we could do in a hundred years. If we just let God be God, and all we have to do is, is establish the atmosphere for Him to come manifest Himself in. And when He brings His presence in, there'll be fullness of joy. God will supernaturally meet every need of every person that comes into His presence. I can preach for a thousand years, try to be entertained in all of that, just with my personality. But there's no way I can accomplish what God has to do in every one of our hearts and every one of our lives. And that's why, that's why we have to create the atmosphere so that God can manifest His presence so that every need of every person is met by God and only God can do that. So it's been in my heart. For the last five years I've been praying as I've been going to the prayer room and Kansas City I've been watching them worship for five years myself and they've been going for 15 years 24 hours a day seven days a week in the prayer room that they call IHOP International House of Prayer but we've already secured our name it's called IHOW International House of Worship and I believe we're asking all musicians and psalmists because what we're going to need is, is we're going to need 15 to 20 praise and worship teams. And we're going to take two-hour shifts, and we won't start out 24 hours. We'll just start doing intercessory nights and things like that. And we'll let God lead us because you, you can't just do a prayer room. God's got to be there. He's got to do it. You know, unless the Lord build the house, they that labor, labor in vain. But as we start to step out, I'm, I'm seeing God start to move. And I'll tell you what's going to happen. I've already seen it. This whole region will be totally transformed by revival from God. Not only that, People will come from all over the world just for God, not a preacher, not any name, only because of God. Only reason why I go to IHOP is because God is there. I never make an appointment. I never tell anybody I'm coming. 
I come in as I like, I leave as I like. I read my Bible, I seek the Lord. But it's a place that His presence is there. And I can hear His voice there. It takes me out of the world and all the things of the world is pulling against all of us. And it's a, it's a sanction, it's a place that you can get alone with God without demons harassing you. And hear God's voice. Because in the world there are many voices chaos to get out of that chaos but I really believe that God is leading us to lead a a movement for him that's going to affect not only this region but these nations of the world and I believe they'll come to Baker, Louisiana our surrounding area and take what God is doing in this place back all over the world and, and, and we'll see Holy Ghost fires start all over the world great moves of God it'll be the, the latter day David's tabernacle Acts chapter 15 in the last days that he'll raise up the David tabernacle remember David in his tabernacle he hired 288 worshipers and they worshiped God seven days a week 24 hours a day. It's the David's tabernacle. Zadok with the Mosaic tabernacle was still in operation. They were still sacrificing in Zadok's tabernacle. But David started a new tabernacle. It was in Jerusalem. And it was just worship. There was no more sacrificing there. But they just worshiped God seven days a week, 24 hours a day. And what David would do is when he would go through something, he would write a psalm, do you remember? And he would send it to the chief musician. And what the musician would do is he would sing David's writings before the Lord in accessory, praise and worship. And those those intercessions in praising God like like an incense would go up into the presence of God himself in heaven and God would be honored and honor those psalms and we have those psalms today many of those psalms when we go through hurting things when we're Uh, need an anchor in our life the enemies are surrounding us the pressures of life are pulling against us all of us go to the Psalms and those are the same Psalms that were actually sung before the Lord in the David's tabernacle are y'all out there listen I want to sing God's word man I want to I I want God's power in this place, man. I don't want no name. I don't want nobody having no recognition, man. I I want all of us being in our place, and we want God exalted in this place. It's all about Him. We just want God. So all over this place, if you want God, stand up as we get ready to go out of this place. I wait on it. We you? wait on Yes. Yes. We wait for you. We wait for you. Walk in this room. Holy Ghost.
say with me tonight in a confession to the Lord? Say, Lord, I thank you that you have prepared a place for me. God, I thank you that you have placed me on your path and given me power and great peace that only you can give. So now, Lord, I receive your blessing, your favor in my life in the name of Jesus. Come on, give the Lord a great big shout in this place. Hey, thanks so much for being with us. We love each and every one of you. We bless you in the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord. Have a great, great night. Make sure you put your seatbelts on going home. We pray a great rest of this week. And then also Sunday, I want to see you. I'm, I'm teaching on the Lord's prosperity in our life. So uh, make sure you're here Sunday morning. We're going to have a great time. Love you guys. Have a great, great rest of this week. We bless